sometimes the nicest characters could just harbor the most evil. So today, I'm gonna talk about some characters that absolutely could be evil if they wanted to be, but they're not. But if they were, what could they do to achieve their goals? That's what we're here to find out. We've got Harmony. Do you ever think Harmony gets tired of handing out catalogs, updating catalogs, working with Inklings and Octolings day in and day out at Hotlandis because her boss is never there? Heck, she has to help out anyone in Inkopolis Square and the plaza remotely. The end of the world would surely mean no more work, right? Think about all the different items you can get for your locker from Hotlandis. She has to have access to those supplies to be able to give them to you. Just imagine Harmony walking out of the back, barricade bumpers attached to her side, and equipped with like three Rainmakers. What is the average person going to do about that? I I'm walking the other way if I see that. And don't forget, Harmony is a literal pop star. Most of you watching this video probably use the social media. We all know what pop stars can do if they use their popularity for evil. She probably would have Inkfish at her every beck and call if she needed something. You know it. Maybe that grabber that Harmony is oh so distracted with is also to keep us safe along the way. Hmm? Hmm? And here's Sheldon. For all we know, Sheldon could be one or two more bad retail experiences from snapping like a twig. Splatoon 3's weapon supply shop, aka Ammo Knights, differs from Splatoon 1 and Splatoon 2's in that there's absolutely zero cash flow going on here. Players can purchase weapons via Sheldon licenses, which are obtained by leveling up or by getting a weapon to its first freshness step. It's a system that highly encourages weapon experimentation, yes, but also leaves fellow like Sheldon broke as can be. Possibly. Do you think he's hoping and praying his next location will accept money again? If it goes too long, something might have to be done. We already know he has inside knowledge with the Squidbeak Splatoon. What does he know? Sheldon has the power to send a drone to your location to take photos at literally any time. Ah, uh, Mr. Coco. Mr. Coco is a big fella. A wonderfully kind coconut crab who just wants to sell you shoes. Or at least, that's what he wants you to think. Every time you make a purchase, his eyes sparkle with pure joy. It's his life's purpose. But he's a big, strong crab. What if someday he turned sinister? I don't think the average Inkling or Octoling is beating him up in a fight. If Mr. Coco is stronger than literally everyone else in Splatsville, who is going to stop this guy from breaking and entering? Just take out any cameras, go inside, take what you need, and leave. If he really doesn't care, he could just do it during the daytime. Who's strong enough to stop him at a moment's notice? Sheldon? <laughs> no. Those weapons are going in his crabby claws. Just look at the way he looks around. What secrets are you harboring? Oops. Mind control shoes. Didn't see that coming. Did you? <laughs> Did you? Ah, uh, Judd. Judd is true neutral. He can't have bias due to the nature of his job. We know this from Splatoon 2's Final Fest. But what if he wasn't? What if he slipped? The easiest way to make Judd evil is just to make him give incorrect results. Judd's rulings are immediate, irreversible, and supposed to be always right. It starts with a few close matches, so no one catches on. Every once in a while, a game within a few tenths of a percentage is given to the wrong team. Almost no one can tell anyway, and if you really think so, Judd is always right, so you probably were just wrong. I have a video if you want to see if you're as good as Judd when it comes to guessing Turf Wars. But then, uh, things start getting worse. The occasional match with a clear winner doesn't go the right way. Naturally, there's infighting. Is someone bribing Judd? Is he finally getting old? No one wants to say Judd is doing this on purpose. You know who this is, right? The little jellyfish from the Grand Festival? This poor, innocent jellyfish who dropped a tasty ice cream on the ground and was ignored for the entire fest? Little Timmy? Just imagine this little guy goes home after being blasted on social media all weekend for how sad he was. Imagine going to school and your classmates know about what happened. What if 
What if his classmates weren't nice about it? We don't know what jellyfish are truly capable of. We know they drive cars. We know they probably have heavy influence on the economy of Incadia, with just how many there are and how many events they go to. Jellyfish communicate with each other in a number of ways, ranging from light to chemicals. What if little Timmy decided to become a chemist just so he could get revenge? By the time the next big festival comes around, little Billy could be much older, much smarter. Maybe add something to the water supply right before the event, which wouldn't hurt anybody, just a chemical signal, signaling the other jellyfish to just not show up. See how these ink fish like it when they're ignored. See? See? Marigold? Marigold is a constant. She's everywhere. She helps players get to the recon areas. She sells drinks and snacks that power up cephalopods so they can level up themselves and their gear faster than ever. She runs table turf. If Marigold wanted to be evil, all she would have to do is betray that trust. Imagine no more reliable recon. You ask Marigold to take you somewhere, and uh, well, maybe, maybe she will. In fact, you could have a better chance at going to where you want to go if you don't select the right location. It's like reverse psychology. Imagine if one day she just reverses the effects of everything in her shop. Her drinks make the chance of finding an ability worse. <laughs> her snacks make you gain food and money 1.5 times or even two times slower than usual. Now, Marigold finally gets a break. Krusty Sean spent a lot of time traveling around the world over the course of Splatoon 3's lifespan. Maybe after his grand journey across the world, he decides that working for Grizzco could be a great idea. After all, Grizzco did partner up with Sean during the Wonder Crust. Working with Sean to understand the trends that Inkfish like the most, Grizzco's vibes start to change. They start doing affirmations. Grizzco is good. Grizzco is great. Spend your time at Grizzco. Defeat the Salmonid Menace. Little Buddy. Little Buddy clears every problem ahead of him without breaking a sweat. You can throw him, and he'll always come back. He's a scrappy little fella, which is why you don't want to get on his bad side. Do you really want to cross that? No. No, you don't. Him holding back is to keep the rest of us safe. Thanks, little buddy. And then you have Pearl. Pearl is already evil. Her parents made Camp Triggerfish. Okay, okay, maybe I'm joking. But with the sheer amount of money that Pearl has, she could make the jump from team heroes to team villains without breaking a sweat. She could buy her way into getting a rocket made, an evil robot built, you name it. But the easiest way to gain control of large areas at once would just be to threaten folks the same way she took down Tartar. Just use her extremely powerful killer whale as a show of force. Let's be real. One blast from that would probably have most inkfish happy to give her whatever she wants. And last, but definitely not least, it's Big Man. Big Man may or may not be the greatest criminal, but with a bit of fine tuning to his ideas, he absolutely could be. He could put subliminal messaging inside of his beats without anybody realizing it. He's done music mixing for literally everything from Deep Cut to the Grand Festival. Do you know how many cephalopods were exposed to his fresh tunes that weekend? A lot. Big Man's other secret skill is that he doesn't seem to attract the ire of the Salmonids. If he needed a base of operations, could he not just sneak away to a map being overtaken by a big run? No one would want to go there besides Grizzco employees. His chance of being found out would be much lower than usual compared to, let's say, plotting away in Deep Cut Studio where, you know, there's glass everywhere. How can you be evil in plain sight? Welp, maybe now you've came around to respect these characters a little bit more. Maybe you'll even consider giving them a compliment. Gotta be on their good side if they decide they don't want to play nice anymore. 
thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoyed this silly little hypothetical. I'm not gonna lie, I, I think an evil harmony in Splatoon 4 would be kinda awesome, and also really funny. If you enjoyed watching, make sure to leave a like and subscribe for more shenanigans in the future! Buh bye bye